My name is Jana, and you're watching Finnish Knitting Stories, episode 26. Welcome. I'm coming to you from Finland. I'm a knitter, spinner, and yarn dyer, and you can find me on Instagram, Eskettunit, and on Ravelry, Eskettunit. Uh, warm welcome to all my old and new subscribers. The numbers are just growing. I still can't believe it. I'm... <laughs> I don't know, I'm so excited and shocked. I think, yeah, that's the right word, because I can't believe all of you are here watching watching me in my little forest corner. <laughs> Big thank you to each and every one of you for liking, subscribing, and for following my crafty journey. I'm working on my granny stripe blanket. It hasn't grown much. Look, yeah, there is the stitch marker from last week. Uh, because uh, life has been a bit crazy again. This oh, now sun came out. Great! Every time I record, sun decides to come out and mess with mess with my lighting. But yeah, sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird. I woke up this morning and I had stuffed nose, but I hope this is still okay. That I don't sound too annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, our daughter has been feeling poorly since last Monday. Luckily, not a corona. Tested twice. Uh, yeah, just a regular cold. But still, yeah, she she gets cranky when, when she's not feeling well. Our son is easier that way. He just sleeps it off and that's it. And our little one doesn't sleep much. She's just cranky and wants all the attention. So I have had my hands busy. But yeah, that's enough about personal life. Now you know <laughs> what's going on. I haven't been posting on Instagram. I have not been on Ravelry. Yeah, had my hands full with, with our daughter. Uh, yeah, I still went to work this week and was posting orders, getting a new yarn in the store, all, all that regular stuff. Had a little yarn update, nothing too exciting. One new colorway, but... Yeah, not. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about my knits because this is this is my knitting video podcast and sometimes crochet, sometimes crochet as well. I don't know. This this has been very exciting again. I haven't worked on it in a long time. This is a granny stripe blanket. I showed it last time. Yeah, I I added only like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight rows so far since last week, but. It's better than nothing, right? At least it's growing. Yeah, people have been asking me, how do you make time for knitting with your busy life? Uh, like, how many hours a day do you knit? There was a question. I think I knit in total maybe like two hours a day, sometimes three if I'm lucky and kids fall asleep quickly. Uh, because... I, I wake up in the morning if, if I'm the first one and I usually get maybe half an hour of knitting with my morning coffee before everybody else wakes up. Uh, then I go to work, then I come back in the late evening and then I only knit when when everybody's sleeping again. Yeah, when the kids are asleep, which does not leave much time for knitting. But I have a little hack. <laughs> I always have all sorts of projects around the house. I have a basket here and a bag there. And I have one in my car as well and one in my purse. I carry all sorts of projects around with me. Because you never know when you get can get five minutes of knitting time. Like sometimes our daughter gets busy playing and then I just take the nearest project. Usually it's this one is in the basket in the living room and the other blanket as well, the uh, cozy memories blanket. And then I add maybe a couple of stitches and they add up. Surprisingly, they add up. Like if you put a progress keeper and then you follow how much you have added, let's say in a week, just a little short moments here and there. Yeah, you will be surprised that it's actually some amount of knitting. That's how I grow my projects. That's why I have many of them at the same time. I can't work on one because if it's something challenging like lace or cables, I just couldn't pick it up. That's why I always have a pair of socks or some simple garter or mindless stockinette that, that you can pick up at any moment and you can leave it there at any moment and you know what, what you need to do next. So... If if you have young children or otherwise busy life, try that. Try try working on a simple mindless project and leaving them around in a convenient locations where you can just pick them up, knit a bit, and put them back down. Yeah, this is crochet, <laughs> but 
yeah, you know what 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 I mean. Like socks. Uh yeah, I wanted to show you my finished objects. I only have two. One I can't even show you because our daughter is wearing wearing them. The socks, the pair of socks that I showed you last time. I finished them actually straight away last Friday or Saturday, I think I finished them. And I didn't even get to block them because she just pulled them on and took off. So yeah, she's she's been wearing them. So no, no nothing to show you. She's wearing them now. And but I do have one one very exciting finished object. Now my nose is getting shut. Sorry for a <laughs> annoying voice. Uh I, I still wanted to record something for you because I missed you guys. I haven't talked to anyone in a week and I <laughs> I really mi missed this. Our cr common crafting time. Yeah. Uh, so, foxes. Foxes are ready. I finished them last night. Look, they have sleeves. <laughs> the sleeve fairy visited th this house. Yeah, she brought a bit of inspiration with her and I finished the sleeves. Yeah. They weren't they weren't actually that scary. It wasn't much work because uh they only have a few decreases. I think maybe like four or five and and that's it. So it was easy. I knit them up till here on my 40 centimeter circulars. The ones the same ones that I use for hats. So it was quite okay. I don't like knitting sleeves, but this was okay. So here are my foxes, and they are gorgeous. And there is the bottom. It also has I can't see. <laughs> it also has a bit, a bit of a strand, a bit of color work there. Oh, they are so beautiful. It's it's such a lovely sweater. Um, I think I want another one. I've I've been playing around with the idea of winter foxes, but I still don't know about the colors. I would like this one to be like light beige or maybe like pearl gray but then I'm not sure if I would make a winter winter version should the foxes still be orange or should they be white but then will they look like if they are like polar foxes will they still look like foxes yeah the pattern is into the wild into the wild yeah by Tanya Barley on Ravelry it's a paid pattern uh it's wonderful and the yarn I used is Plotolopi single not double not with anything else um i used less i i ended up use ended up using less yarn than than the pattern suggested i don't know uh i reserved 3 of these for myself and uh i only used 2 this is actually the leftover from the second plate my length is okay i don't know i think my my gauge was was fine but oh well better this way than than, than running out of yarn I guess. Yeah, and it's beautiful green. It's not my color at all, but I decided I'm going to use it because foxes need to live in the forest, right? It's not my kind of green. I, I prefer like a cooler and a sage color, lighter. Yeah, but I think I think it's okay. I think it's okay and I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, the weather is good today. I will maybe try to get my husband to take a little video off me outside just like last time with a dress that you get the idea how, how this looks on me because it's hard it's hard now in in the video yeah I'll, I'll add it somewhere <laughs> but I'm, I'm in love with this and knitting with plotolopi is not scary at all even single just remember don't pull yeah uh, try not to tension yarn too roughly like yeah, don't, don't, don't pull because it will break. But the good news is that you can always reattach just by felting two ends together in your hands. So even if it breaks, don't stress about it. But if you compare this to other unspun yarns that I have used before, like for example, finish unspun, this is much sturdier. Uh, finish unspun just breaks immediately, like by Pirtenke Hrama. It's so soft and fragile and... I have had some, I don't know, I don't have them here. They are on the other shelf there. Uh, I have noted yen. Uh, no, no. And this is way more fragile, I think. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to show you finish unspun, but it's it's on the other shelf now. Um, yeah, this is sturdier. This 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 doesn't break so easily, which is which is good news. 
Where, where, where do I put stuff? Yeah, I have everything arranged around me on the floor. But beautiful pet pattern. I can recommend it. It it sits nicely. Mine has mine has good positive ease because I wanted it to be like that. I want it to be loose, nice, and very comfortable. Uh, yeah, foxes ready. Love them. Well, nothing else to add, except the video or picture. I'll I'll figure something out. Let's talk about whips. Uh, I have a few. I have a few of active whips. One new. One new cast on, yes. Um, yeah, socks. I wanted to talk to you about these socks that I've been knitting. The yarn is by Lonely Sock Lady, Dyer from Denmark. She makes beautiful self-striping yarns. I've been really enjoying this. But you have seen, they are almost ready for toes. I knit two at a time on separate circulars. That's just how I prefer to do that. Uh, but... I wanted to talk to you about heels in these socks because I've been experimenting with, with the cuff. I saw several people on Instagram tried this, at least two or three. I've seen they ta you tagged me. Hi, <laughs> this this cuff. I'm talking about it in the previous episode if you're interested how I made this. Or there are actually no instructions <laughs> on Instagram by, by other people in my, my stories. But yeah, back to the heel. I decided to experiment on the heel a little bit. I wanted to make another another type of heel, try something new, learn something new this year. Um, and I've mentioned already that I have quite high foot. And the problem is that I usually don't have enough space right here. Whatever I do, basically, when I wear the, the socks, they stretched out like this. And in a stripe, it's not nice. Uh, so, I've been playing around with the idea of making a heel that would hug my own heel, that would like uh, recreate the shape of my heel. And <laughs> I'm not sure, are there tutorials for that? Is Has somebody figured this out already? Is there a special name for it? But I did see a picture of that kind of heel on Instagram. Uh, it was by... A Russian knitter. And there was no hashtags, there was no mention of what's the name of the heel, how do you knit it. So I just tried to figure out how to do this uh, just from a picture I saw. I thought, okay, can't be that complicated. So I'm trying, do I have a sock blocker somewhere here? I think no. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I'll try to show you. Basically, a regular heel would go like this it would it would go like straight and like here or maybe a bit rounded but look this heel goes out and it creates extra space right there it also eats a bit more yarn if you make it like this but it 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 mimics the shape of your own foot and i tried it on and oh my god it fits like a glove on my high foot uh <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, I've been yeah, I've been frogging and trying again. I've been trying to figure out how to make this, but basically you make an increases there on the back. There and there is like this kind of stripes and I don't know. I don't think I can explain it right now, but if anybody is interested, I maybe could try to make, I don't know, a video, a description of it. I'm not sure maybe any somebody has already claimed this heel and I'm 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 stepping in into somebody else's uh, yard like if if you have seen this kind of heel and you know who 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 has who's the author please let me know because yeah I I just tried to figure it out from a picture I saw on Instagram and I don't know it, it fits very nicely. I will show you the fit once I finish the socks, but I think it's it's a good successful heel for me. It is a very different from everything else I've made, but I was so determined to, to, to try to make this kind of heel, and I think I, I succeeded. Could still work on some details, maybe make the decreases here nicer. I don't know. I still need to think about it. This is the first time I tried it, and yeah... And I did not have... Are they even same? I think they are same. 
I did not have any tutorials available. At least I didn't find any. So, there. My little experiments, because <laughs> I decided I, I want something else. I've been using like same sock recipe for years. I like French heel or like maybe Dutch heel sometimes, but usually French heel and I've been just doing same same thing over and over again. Yeah, <laughs> old one trick pony. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to learn something new. Yay. Uh, toe up socks, still not my thing. I have knit a few pairs, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but maybe I could give it a go. Maybe with some nice pattern. I know Andrea Maori has a few. Maybe I could I could try some some of that. Uh, what else? Yeah, the blanket you already saw. I showed you my crochet blanket. Not much progress on that. Um, and I have a new cast on. If you've been watching, you remember my half advent by. Uh... I'll find a card. My Artemis yarns. I have this kind of card here, but uh, and labels, labels here. That's the yarn dyer, and my my half advent was garden inspired, and now it's in this basket. It's a mess here. <laughs> it's a mess here. I have my nostep in uh, there. There is my half advent, and I started um. A blended shawl for our daughter. I posted a picture in the morning of this bit, but the picture is actually from yesterday. So I got this for last night. It, it's not much. It's a tiny shawl. <laughs> I have added a few colors. One, two, three. I don't know. I think I'm over a half. I'm now on a color number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, somewhere there. Um, around halfway through. And it's this long, kind of triangular shawl. Uh, the pattern is by, I wrote it down, Michelle Krause. I hope I'm saying the surname right. I would say it like that, Michelle Krause. I don't know how to say it in any other way. Sorry if it, that's wrong. Uh, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I will link everything down below as usually. Or if you're from a phone, it's probably somewhere <laughs> somewhere else in the description box. Yeah, where I link all, all the patterns that I'm using. Uh, yeah, some of the colors blend really smoothly and nicely. And, and I don't know, I'm almost regretting putting in this blue. But on the other hand, it kind of makes it more interesting. It, it adds, adds more color to it. And then it will continue in the... I'm on the last green color and then it will continue in yellows and pinks. Okay, I only have four left. Why do I only have... I have four left. So that means I have used eight. I'm on color number eight now. Which is this light green with a bit of yellow already in it. Yellow and orange. It's right here. And somebody asked, how do I make these cute little balls? Uh, do I make them on the some kind of cake? Ball binder? No, I don't. I make them by hand on my Noste pinna. I could maybe show you someday. Actually, you could use pretty much any stick, but this is by Knit Pro. Uh, many brands carry these, but and many people have made them by hand as well, by themselves, created their own, yeah, ball winding sticks. I, I bought mine. This is by Knit Pro, and I have I have had it for quite a few years. When I started. I bought this when I started spinning yarn, which was, I think, about four years ago, maybe. I think. I want to say, yeah, four years ago. So, yeah. And with this, you can create a nice center pull ball, actually. Now I'm taking yarn from outside, but there is nice center pull ball. And it actually stays. It keeps the shape. It's, it's absolutely... Wonderful, wonderful. So, yes, uh, and it's much faster. When 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 I need to cake my minis, I usually do it by hand because it's too much fuss on the on the big ball winder. I I don't I <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah, the big skeins I cake on the ball winder, but not not the little ones. So, yeah, here we are, little blended shawl. It's a 
very simple mindless knit. It's just the garter with increases and decreases on the edges. And it's a free pattern. If you want one as well, go check it out. So this is what I've been working on. Just to brighten up my, my grey days. Okay. I lost the ball of yarn. No, the, the, the basket has too big eyelets. The little balls are falling through. Oops. Okay. I hope they stay to get together. Uh, what else I've been, I've been thinking about? Uh, I, I've been planning to finish some whips. I will make an episode where I go through all my whips. I had an, absolutely no chance to do it this week, unfortunately, due to our circumstances. But I hope next week I have a better timing and if the, the, our little one is back to school. Then I could maybe take Friday off and record an episode next Friday. But I've been slowly arranging them here to record an episode. And I found a sweater that I did not remember I started last summer. And now I really want to finish it. Actually, I have a lot of ideas what else I want to cast on. But I think I'm going to finish this one before. Uh, this is a Forager by Melody Hoffman. And I started it last summer like yeah this summer that uh, last year summer last year and it's knit with a strand of plotolopi and a strand of mohair and as you can see mine are not matchy matchy i'm using gray plotolopi and beige mohair this is drops kid silk um color it's either 12 or 20 i don't remember is this a darker beige or lighter beige one or another and then one of the grey plodolopi. And it's a very basic, simple raglan sweater. And it would have been perfect for this sweater. But I had it sitting there in one of my project bags and I completely forgot I had it. I forgot I started it and I have already separated the sleeves and I just need to finish the body, not around half of the body left and then the sleeves. And I will have another great, great sweater. And it's, I think it's going to be extra warm and toasty because Blotilopi and mohair. And look at the color it makes if you combine gray with beige. Don't be afraid to experiment. Like, um, I like combining the colors that kind of shouldn't go together, probably. I don't know who would put gray with beige. Yeah, I did. And it gives it a bit of a like a halo effect. I don't know. I like this marled look of... It softens up the gray because alone this is I don't know I've been I've been so obsessed with gray for many years that I'm just over it now. I don't know. I I don't want to make gray knits. I think it softens it up, but I still have a lot of gray yarn in my stash as you can guess. Yeah. And it it softens it up. So, I think I'm going to finish this one next. I will take this into my active whips and and work on that. Uh, what else? I have notes today. <laughs> um, la la la. Then I would like to do a cardigan for our daughter. Uh, and I don't know how much yarn I will actually have left from, from that half advent. It's probably not going to be enough for a cardigan. But maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I could add some white mohair to it and maybe some other yarn from my stash and just try to work it out. Yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, yeah, I would like to do a faded cardigan for her. I, I, I did one from Scrap Yarn, I think, last year or before, and it's getting a bit small. The sleeves are short, and I first thought maybe I just could knit the sleeves longer, but then I thought it's not in great condition anymore. Yeah, she wears it at home, and it's okay, but she would need a nice cardigan to go out in the town uh, or to school. So I want to knit uh, some kind of faded cardigan for her. Maybe I can I could use the scraps from Half Advent and then try to continue the fade from, from my stash yarn with white mohair. Yeah. And then another thing... I'll take my crochet while, while I chat to you. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is Old Faves Cal. I've been meaning to remind you about it for two last episodes and guess what? I did not have notes so I forgot. Uh, it's a cal where you knit along where you take one of the patterns you have had in your library or forever 
the patterns that you have wanted to knit for or maybe you have a book or a magazine but you have not knitted for some reason and yeah the general rule was that the pattern should be at least like a year old but it's like a very loose rule if you're a new knitter and you've been knitting for less of a year then of course any pattern that that excited you in the very beginning will do yeah and basically it's a very very easy going knit along there have been quite a few entries on Instagram. You can participate on Instagram yeah, by knitting something and adding a hashtag oldfavescal. And then there is a four finished objects, a separate hashtag. Uh, and then at the end of the... Actually, in the beginning of February, I'll draw a couple of prizes. I was thinking maybe a gift card to my store and uh, some patterns and Ravelry, maybe. That would be easy. I would not need to ship anything maybe some yarn prizes as well but i still have time to figure it out but definitely definitely something exciting i'll, I'll figure out and there will be a several winners i was thinking maybe like a three you don't have to finish it whips also count just use the hashtag and then i'll draw the winner it's just i want to encourage people to knit knit some of their old favorites because uh we we tend to follow the new shiny thing we get excited about all the new patterns that come out and then we forget about the old ones that we have really loved some time ago i know i have that problem that uh yeah i get distracted by by all the new stuff and then completely forget the the old faves and I've been trying to knit, to go back in my Ravelry library and knit some of the older patterns. I knit quite a few last year and I'm very happy about it. And I feel like I have accomplished something. I, I feel very happy that I knit them. And now I've been thinking about a couple of other things that I want to knit. I will talk about one of them. I don't know, am I the only person who still has not knit Love Note by Tin Can Knit? Am I the only one? Who else? Do you have a love note? I know people who have two or three love notes and I have none. I don't know how did that happen. And it has been on my list like really forever. And I want to knit it. I love it. And now I've been going through my stash and looking at yarn I could I could use. It's a quick pattern. I could maybe still knit it for the knit cal, for our old faves cal. But I'm going to knit it anyways. So... A couple of days ago, I went through my stash because I do want to knit stash yarn. While going through my stash, I realized that I have um, this one skein problem that <laughs> uh, I usually buy just one skein of each. I rarely buy sweater quantities and then, then I have one skein of each color and I need to combine them in probably some Stephen West pattern. But yeah, I found a few that I had two skeins because... Uh, Love Note would need, for my size, two skeins of merino and two, two balls of mohair, or like one skein of mohair. Two skeins of mohair. How many? Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Basically, two skeins of merino should be enough. And now I will show you what I found in my stash. But the problem is that I, I could not start because I don't have mohair for any of that. Uh... My first choice was this this yarn by Ara and it's a festari color. It's a festival Yuvaskula knit festival color. Festari festival color from last year, 2021. And I didn't get it at the festival. I it got sold out and then my hubby surprised me. He ordered it for me from Ara yarns. Finnish dyers uh here in 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 Turku, <laughs> uh, and it's a beautiful color. It's first I thought a shawl, but I think it's a bit dark for me as a shawl. Sorry, my voice is getting squeaky. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing my voice slowly here. I would need to drink something, but oh well. But I don't know what color, what kind of mohair would go with it because this is not really black. It's like a dark brown with a violet uh, like that violet maybe like a purple shades i don't know does the camera pick it up it's it's a complex color and i think if i would put black mohair with it i would kill it i would absolutely murder it 
I think I would like to brighten it up with some, if I would pick some color from, from here, but I don't have mohair like that in my stash. And that would mean I would need to, I would need to go yarn shopping and buy some, buy some mohair. Anyways, so that's one option. I think this would be a beautiful, beautiful love note. Yeah, that's, that's what I found in my stash. I have two of those. Then I have another one by Ara, but they are from different dye lots. This is their Suntuba Paeva uh, color, like a birthday color. And this is an older skin and this is a newer skin and they are they are quite different because they are from different dye lots. But I was thinking if I use them, I put the darker one on top, lighter one on the bottom, lighter one on top, and it will be a bit of a fade, why not? Uh it will definitely work. Especially if I combine it with mole hair. Yeah, I think that might work. Uh what else? But again, I don't have a suitable mohair for that. It would need to be this peachy kind of color. I don't have anything like that. Uh, I pulled the black and white and I have a couple of pinks there, but they, they are not right kind of pinks. I don't know. No, not, 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 not gonna work. The white one is not gonna work. Uh, another option <laughs> for my love note. Uh... Another Finnish dyer, Lanitium. Uh, this is color Isla de Muerta, and they are also different dye lots. As you can see, they, they are pretty different, but I would do the same stuff again. One on top, one on the bottom, and a little fade. Uh, because if I add more hair, they, they would blend nicely. So, I don't know. Pink, blue. Again, don't have anything suitable. I have pink, but it's too bright of a pink. Maybe. I have a Rowan mohair in very bright pink that... I don't know why I even purchased it, but... Uh, yeah. And then I have this hand spun that I found. And this would be easy. I would just pair it with white mohair, but... I'm afraid I don't have enough. This is around 180 grams, but it's not fingering weight. It's closer to sport. What I estimated, yeah what I measured. This is my hand spun, but it would be such a fun, such a fun love note with white mohair. But then I would need to make it probably with shorter sleeves. It's, or very cropped. I don't know. I wanted it to be like mid-length, a bit cropped with long sleeves, but this is definitely not enough. Or then we make two love notes. Why not? Okay. Uh, enough with the love notes. <laughs> uh, what else? Then I've been thinking of knitting a cardigan from Stripes book by Vera Velimaki because I finished the dress. I feel like I I need another knit from here. And I've been thinking about Kapu. Kapu cardigan. Right there. I wanted to I wanted to knit it in this rusty one, but it's absolutely not my color, and I don't, I can't put it next to my face. It won't look good. So I've been thinking about these two. This is Bio Shetland by BC Garn, and uh, colors number one and number three. And I don't know. <laughs> Does this look too much like my Myra dress? But yeah. This would be my main, and this would be my contrasting color. How would Capu look in these? But it would be so me. This this would be so me. Just a thought. Just wanted to share a thought with you because I need to share to to process it properly. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it. Not casting on. Haven't even caked the yarn because I'm not set on the colors at all. Uh, what else? Next thing. Next exciting thing. 5,000 subscribers. I, I I have to have a giveaway to thank you all for, for this amazing number. I don't know, it just happened. One day I opened my YouTube and it says 5,000 and it was actually yesterday. And I was like, what? What, what is happening? I'm, I'm so, I'm chuffed, guys. I'm, I can't believe it. I don't know. <laughs> thank you so much for all the love and support and thank you for being here with me. Thank you. I, I can't believe it. 
<laughs> so uh, let's do a 5,000 su subscriber giveaway. Uh, yeah, if you want to enter, let's let's first talk about the prizes. I will next week, uh, bef when I record my next episode, hopefully next week, draw three people. Uh, and the gifts will be a pattern of your choice from Ravelry. But there is one rule. It has to be by Finnish designer. Because this is Finnish knitting stories. I want to support my my wonderful Finnish designers, knitwear designers. So uh, and up to let's say ten euros. So any pattern up to ten euros. I don't know what's that in dollars, but <laughs> actually, pretty much any pattern by Finnish Finnish designer of your choice. And I will draw three winners. And to enter, uh, put in the comments which pattern you would like to choose. And that way we we will maybe find out about some nice patterns that that you would like to have so that's that's simple i think that's simple enough yes leave in the comments the pattern you would like to have by a finnish designer please yeah there are a lot of them <laughs> sari nordlund anna johanna mayunitz and uh koti kotoni um <laughs> so many of them uh sara from my cup of knitting uh <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many, <laughs> so exciting. Vera Valimaki, of course, and many more, many more that I did not mention. <laughs> um, those are just off the top of my head, the ones around me that I've been, whose patterns I've been using. You can see here Anna Johannes, Anna Johannes, beautiful woodland. I'll talk about it later. So, uh, if you want to enter a giveaway, yes, leave a comment with the pattern you would like to have by Finnish knitwear designer and next week I will I will choose randomly three people and will gift you a pattern through Ravelry or if you're not on Ravelry we will figure out because many designers have their own stores or they are on different platforms so we can we can work around it if, if you're not on Ravelry uh yeah what I'm wearing today let's smoothly go to that <laughs> I'm wearing Woodland by Anna Johanna, another wonderful Finnish knitwear designer. I, I know her personally. She's a wonderful, warm person and very talented. She makes these crazy good patterns. I, I love them. I, I love them all. And this is my first sticking experience and it went pretty well. Uh, the book... Uh, the pattern is in her first book, Strands of Joy, also available in English or on Insagata in Finnish. And it's this color work. I'll show you where is where where is the I don't know. Can you see the color work? There is a forest happening. Oh my mine needs depilling. My yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm trying to sorry, everything is falling. Yeah, mine needs depilling. Yeah. Check there. There are animals. There are woodland animals. There is a bear and all kind of, all kind of things. And of course, it's knit in a Finnish sheep wool. This is my own hand dyed koti wool, uh, in color vikuna, which means fig. And in the green one is Finnish forest. And then I ordered these special buttons. I found them on Etsy. I ordered them from Canada, because. I can't believe it. I couldn't find moose buttons in Finland. I don't know. Forests are full of moose. <laughs> yeah. Of deers and moose. And I had to order them from Canada. But yes, they, they match perfectly. Oh, I love it. It's it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, it's a it's a labor of labor of love. The pattern was amazing and very exciting to knit, but it was a lot of work. And then the first stick was very scary, but I think I managed. Nothing has escaped, nothing has frayed. Um, I did not reinforce it by sewing. I crocheted the the stick around the stick, and then we sandwiched it in a. We I sandwiched it in, using Anna Johanna's instructions in a in this knit border. It was very fun. Uh yeah. Mm, what else? What else? Then a really, I don't know, really amazing thing happened last week. I've been, as I already mentioned, I've been having quite a rough week. Yeah, it wasn't easy. I didn't sleep much. And then one evening I was just sitting, sitting in the living room trying to knit a bit. It was quite late. And then my phone beeps. Like an email comes. I, I pick up my phone and oh, some something on Ravelry. Probably some pattern update or something. Then I look at it again and 
Somebody gifted me a pattern. Somebody sent me a pattern gift on Ravelry. Thank you so much, Th Cynthia. <sighs> a subscriber, a follower from YouTube. And I don't know, I'm, I'm so grateful for it because... I rarely get any gifts from anyone. I'm usually the one giving gifts to other people because I love it, I enjoy it, but I I, I don't get, get gifts too often and it meant so much to me. She sent me a loom pattern by Sari Nordlund because I mentioned, I think I mentioned it somewhere that, I don't remember even, where did I mention it, that I want to knit it, I want to knit loom and I have not even purchased the pattern and it's been on my list since it came out and Cynthia kindly gifted me a pattern and I was just sitting there on a sofa staring at my phone I couldn't believe something like that would happen like why why would somebody send me something <laughs> and uh, yeah I was I was shouting at, to my husband like Temu Temu look at this look what just happened and he, he was saying what what happened I think somebody sent me a gift on Ravelry <laughs> I was like a, I was like a little kid yeah <laughs> Us knitters, we don't need much to be happy. <laughs> Some new yarn or a pattern or like... Oh my god. Thank you, thank you so much. You you really made... You made my day. You you made my week, actually. I don't know. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And it was unexpected and it was a great surprise. And it, it, it made me... It made me feel very warm and that you even thought about me. And thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. And one more, one more thing yeah, about Lumme. I've been thinking that I have to knit it now, right? I have to knit it now. And I think I want to knit it in, in some of my stash yarn. And then I went through my stash and a few years ago, I did stash quite much of Suomi Villa by Novita. And it's the right thickness. And if this would be my contrast color for Lumme, uh, I just need to pick out the main color. This is this is the last thing I promise, <laughs> and then we will finish for for today. Uh, I have this color and it's very beautiful. I would love it like this, but I don't have enough for Lumme. Unfortunately, I just don't have enough of it. This would have been perfect. I don't know. I just can't go and buy more yarn. I bet you can get it somewhere, but. I cannot buy more yarn right now. <laughs> that that would be wrong because I want it from my stash. Then I have this gray, but I'm not feeling it with the gray. I, I plan to knit a sweater for my husband from this one. And I think I'm going to keep it that way. And then I have this brown. I don't know. Would this work as lumme? <sighs> brown is not really my color, but I don't know. Would, th would this be nice? This would be ideal, but I don't know. Is, is there that big difference? What do you think? This or that? Should I just go with this? Because I have the yarn. I have the yarn in my stash. Or should I go and buy a couple of more balls of this? I would only need maybe like a three more balls. It's not expensive yarn, but... But should I just use this because it's in my stash? <laughs> I don't know. My gut tells me that this I, I would be happier with this. But maybe maybe I should make a little swatch and see how how it works. So what do you think? Uh yes, okay. That is it for today. I think I don't have anything else. If I if if I forgot something, we will talk about it next time, but yeah. <laughs> I I really think that's that that's it, and I'm glad I got a chance to record. Hubby has been keeping kids busy there. They are doing some crafts in the basement. He took them to basement, uh, because it is noisy here. Nothing nothing we can do, and they have been playing hungry hippos there, and then the whole house is shaking from that noise. <laughs> um, yeah, the 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 plastic game where hippos eat the eat the balls. The I don't know why did I say it like that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go now and carry on with our weekend. I didn't mention today's Saturday, January twenty second, and it's it's still morning. We have light, yay! We have light. Uh, yeah, I need to take a video of my fox sweater, and then I'll carry on with my weekend. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your love and support, and I appreciate it very very much. 
uh, even when things th things don't go as planned, I can still feel your support because <laughs> I know you're there for me. Okay, thank you so much, guys, and have a very warm, lovely, warm, crafty, crafty weekend. Or no, or just relaxing. <laughs> even if you're not doing anything, that's that that's also very good. A very good plan. Okay, now I'm di I'm digressing and. <laughs> I just wanted to say <laughs> bye. See you. See you next time. I hope in a week. Heppa.